Hillary Clinton goes on the offensive as her email scandal escalates. Trump digs in and calls on Republicans to come home. And Utah is increasingly relevant on the national stage. Could we change the face of the election? Tonight on The Hinkler Report. The FBI is now center court in the election, and some are calling foul. The candidates travel through battleground states at a fever pitch. As scandals dog both campaigns, many wonder how we even got here. In Utah, a robocall from a white supremacist group has infuriated Republicans and Democrats. Evan has two mommies. His mother is a lesbian married to another woman. Don't vote for Evan McMullen. Vote for Donald Trump. Trump criticizes McMullen and his campaign as more Utahns flock to the independent candidate. All this as Utahns continue to wrestle with how to vote. Good evening and welcome to the Hinckley Report. Covering the week, we have Jennifer Napier-Pierce, editor of the Salt Lake Tribune, Matthew Burbank, associate professor of political science at the University of Utah, and Ben Winslow, reporter with Fox 13 News. We're so glad to have you all with us. Thanks and we're, for us. we're getting you. to the end. <laughs> we're so sad about that. The end is near, thank you. <laughs> I want to start by talking about some of the things that we're all watching. We're, we're watching the polls now to really see the path that the candidates have to the White House. And we had some interesting polls. We had a, a Tribune Hinckley poll just this last week that really went through the presidential candidates where Trump was at 32%, Evan McMullen at 30 and Hillary Clinton at 22 percent. Three brand new polls out this morning which have shown that, that Donald Trump is increasing his lead here in the state of Utah, which is very interesting consider, considering that huge number that Evan McMullen had. Let's start with you, Jennifer, for just a minute. Why is that bump happening right now? Well, I think um, the, the Pence message for Republicans to come back, uh -huh. come back to the fold, do, do your duty, uh, and show your allegiance to party really is resonating. And we, we haven't seen that many people on the early voting. And so mm -hmm. I think that people have just been holding back, waiting, and now they're like, okay, I think uh, I can reconcile with it. We, we've seen the, the elected officials, Representative Chaffetz, Representative Stewart, who uh, had denounced Trump just a couple of weeks ago, saying, well, I'm not gonna endorse him, but I'm still gonna vote for him. Mm -hmm. Is that a big difference? Yeah, I think it's a big uh -huh. difference. Um, I don't know. I, I just thought endorsement and voting for would be synonymous, but <laughs> they kind of <laughs> silly me. I, I think they yeah. mean the same thing. Seems to be a distinction people are talking about, though, right? Is, you vote your way. Is. I didn't endorse. I just vote right, for. Right. Right. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Matt Burbank, uh, you have been talking a little about this. Has been something you've been predicting all along, and I think you you talked about how. People are just going to go in to hold their nose and vote for Trump. Is, is that what this is? Well, I think for, for many Republicans, again, Utah being an overwhelmingly Republican state, I think the, the real issue was why aren't people supporting Trump? And of course, it was because that, you know, I mean, a lot of the things he said, a lot of the ways he went campaigning, um, they just kind of rubbed a lot of Utah voters the wrong way. And so, again, it puts you in this very difficult position if you're a, a typical Republican voter in the sense of you have to decide between. Um, choosing f to vote for your party um, and, and support your party. And again, you're probably gonna vote for lots of other Republicans down the ballot, um, but perhaps not voting yeah. for the candidate at the top who you're, you're just not that happy with. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, ben, uh, so he we, we just heard that he, Trump maybe rubbed people the wrong way. I think that's true with some of the things that happened, right? But what about these people? What was, this, what was the deal with McMullen? I mean, did they rub them the wrong way and they, I don't, they're not worried about it anymore? What, how did, what just happened there? I wonder if this is 1992 all over again and McMullen is Ross Perot, just recast. Huh. And, you know, there there are voters that I've talked to who, who are having a legitimate crisis of faith right now. And they are wondering who they do vote for. Do you register a protest vote mm -hmm. and, and vote McMullen, an independent who maybe supports some of your ideals but may not have a shot on the national stage? Do you support uh, the party and go along with Trump as the nominee because uh, it's going to come down to Trump and Clinton. You know, what do you do? I've even known some Republicans who say they are crossing to vote Hillary Clinton, arguing that she's the Republican in this race, effectively. <laughs> huh, that is, uh, so did you have a comment? Uh, only that I, I do think that um, we are seeing this volatility in real huh. time. 
you know, it, it, it's the swings are back and back forth, and voters are still very reluctant to say exactly who they're uh -huh. going to vote for. No, they for. won't say. And, and I think this weekend is going to be the real test because right. this is where the surge of mail-in ballots comes yeah. in. This is where people sit down and they have to make that choice. Now, you're right. They could skip the top of the ticket and just go everything down ticket, but they have a choice to make. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what this was and, and Matt, on this too, because some some reporters are calling this kind of the the shy Trump vote, the mm -hmm. the closet Trump vote. They've been trying to really kind of flesh that out a little bit because sometimes maybe in these polls we're hearing that if you're doing an anonymous online poll, maybe you're a little more honest than if someone asks you a question and said, "Are you going to vote for Donald Trump?" So it sounds like you're saying there is a segment of that population that you're hearing, at least in Utah, that are just not saying who it is, but they're really with Trump. I, I think that that is ultimately uh, a, a real legitimate factor. Uh, Speaker Greg Hughes referred to that at the latest Trump rally, uh -huh. the shy Trump voter, the people who won't publicly say because they're afraid of pushback, hmm. you know, oh, how can you support this person? Oh, he's so awful. He's so terrible. But really that they do believe that, you know, maybe the draining the swamp, as it were, is the best approach for Washington, and then they will vote for him. They just don't want to face you know, the, the Facebook harassment or whatever. Uh, but, you know, that's that's a certainly a real possibility. There's also the people who will not say it, but they may cross over and vote Hillary Clinton. Then there's the people who just may register their vote for Evan McMullen, saying that I want a third party. I want something new. And McMullen seems to be building to mm -hmm. this post-election new conservative movement where if the Republican Party crashes and burns, you get something else. Yeah, I mean, one of the Please. things that when I, I don't see is I, I don't see a whole lot of shy Trump voters, right? I mean, the people who are supporting Trump are, are very clear about that. Um, I, I, I think that's probably wrong. I mean, I think the people who who are not behind Trump at this point are, are again, are probably going to opt for McMullen because, again, they can kind of vote for him with a clear mm -hmm. conscience, right? It doesn't support their party, but what it, what it does is... But you they're going to hold their nose and vote just the I, same? I think that I think lots of Republicans are going to do that, but, I, but are going to vote for Trump. I think he's going to win the state, but, again, I think I think McMullen's going to get a reasonable percentage of the vote, and, and that's going to be largely Trump voters who just can't... I mean, excuse me, largely Republican voters who just can't stomach Trump. Well, let's combine these two thoughts. Maybe, Jennifer, take a second on it, because uh, McMullen uh, really had a huge rise. It came right after the tapes were released. Uh, we got more drips of emails coming out from Hillary Clinton. So it was a perfect storm for him. Got as high as 30 percent. But all the polls are showing that he sort of plateaued. Maybe combine those two great thoughts with what just happened to McMullen. I, I think that people are coming to a realization. Number one, he cannot win. I mean, he's just not going to win. So if you vote for McMullen, it's more than a protest. It's a throwaway. Um, number two, I just think that, uh, you know, people are, as they sort of balance these two candidates, they have such high unfavorables. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're just going to, uh, they're going to cast for one or the other. I, I do think a lot of Republicans feel a, a loyalty and affinity mm -hmm. that's not going to go away in the ballot booth. Yeah. So um, I, I agree. I think Trump's going to come out on top on right. Tuesday. But what, in one Utah. of the problems, however, is again, it's, it's both being Republican and being conservative. And of course, the problem for lots of Utah Republicans is Trump is not really conservative. And that's, uh, that's, that's I think, is what's attracting people to McMullen. It's not that McMullen's going to win, not that he's a, a spectacular candidate, but they can vote for a conservative with a clear conscience, and then they're going to vote Republican. But the rest do of the we way down. really know about McMullen? I mean, <laughs> <Not> <laughs> that that much. there's Absolutely an 11 right. year gap that we cannot that, vet. Right. I mean, that, that presents that, some mm -hmm. complications. That's right, but I think the safety there is he's not going to win anyway, right? So you, you just so well, but there well, is still a yeah. chance that he might. I mean, yes, he's you know the latest polls have shown that he's fallen behind, but there is again this last surge of mail-in ballots, and you could see that. I mean, it it, it really I, we've never seen a Republican poll this low in Utah, and we've never seen a Democrat going this high before in Utah, and then there's the X factor of the independent who's right there, you know, making it a mm -hmm. three-way right. three race. The, the Libertarian is going nowhere. The Green Party is a hash mark in the polls. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it is still a three-way race at right. this point. Right. But yes, it is likely Trump will win Utah and that they will still continue to come home and vote Republican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the factors that are going into this, maybe the rise of McMullen, but kind of why other candidates have not really been doing well, because some controversies have happened over just last week. 
the whole time, right? <laughs> so they're kind of all blending together. But I want to talk about a couple specifically that just happened this week. Uh, we, we got a little hint from the FBI about uh, their, them continuing their investigation of the emails of Hillary Clinton. Even, even just calling it the continuing has become a controversy, right? Whether they reopened the investigation right. or whether they're just continuing it, caught our own elected officials in the middle of that net. What kind of impact, Jennifer, is this having on the campaign, uh, this reopening or the continuing of? Oh, sigh. You know, I think a same? lot of people are like, oh, a shrug, you know, another <laughs> yeah. another wrinkle in this campaign. If you're a voter, this is white noise. Yeah. You have made up your mind. And and this huh. is this is just more of the same for both sides, for all three sides, for all of this. <laughs> it, it is just, you know, emails or emails or emails or emails or, you know, offensive comments or offensive comments or offensive comments or offensive comments that happened decades ago or years mm -hmm. ago. It It's white noise. Well, if do, for voters. Do you I, agree with that? Is, is there anything that's going to come out that is going to rise above the noise that really is going to have an impact? Well, I think one of the things it did, and I, and I don't think we, you saw this effect here in Utah, but I think nationally the effect that you saw was that I, I think that one of the things it, it did is that the, e the raising that email question again um, sort of stopped Hillary Clinton's momentum. It kind of, it, she, she was, I think in many ways, People kind of saying, "Okay, she's go she's going to win," and now that question's been raised again. And, and the Trump the campaign has really she picked never up. never went down either. She just stayed where she was. Right, but that again does that show I, net zero effect, though? No, I, I think what happened is I, I think what you what what we were seeing was sort of a trend towards Clinton, and this and and that email story sort of stopped that. Right, so mm -hmm. it kind of left her where where she was. Again, I still think overall she's going to win, but. You know, I, I think that it, she's probably not going to win some of the states. She might have won if she'd had a little more mm -hmm. momentum going well, in. The emails came out this week, which seems like forever ago, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's been just been this, this litany yes. of uh, uh, surprises. <laughs> anyway, um, I just I think that. Um, Trump has shown remarkable discipline the last few days. I mean, he has not gotten distracted. He stayed on that message from on the emails, right. at, which was actually quite surprising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. he, he does Has seem been. to like, sort of flit from one thing to the next, and he will take bait if Hillary puts it out. He has not done so this week. Has not. It is true. It's true. Let, let's talk about kind of how we heard more about this. So the FBI director. Mm -hmm. People on both sides really been talking about the timing of this. Was this appropriate for him to come out and say this close to the election, we are continuing this investigation, we found new information? Do you have a sense of that, Ben? I think it's up for Congress to really to decide what's appropriate uh, for the FBI director to do this if he was supplementing his testimony or throwing a grenade into the race. Well, is is. I mean, that's really the, the question, right? So if you have kind of the law throwing the grenade into the race, if that's what it is, is that appropriate? Is that something that should have waited? Did you have a sense of that? Well, I mean, I think uh, there are a couple of issues there. On the one hand, I think that um, what he did was sort of in keeping what, what Director Comey did was sort of in keeping what, with what he had done before, right? Again, he'd been very public. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, the FBI does not talk. If, if they're not going to charge somebody, they don't talk about the investigation. Mm -hmm. They just simply say, it's over. That's the end of the story. This was such a big public issue that he felt like he had to come out. So again, he showed up in Congress, he testified, he did all those things. And so having done that, I think he felt like he had to he had to continue this. The real difficulty, however, was he essentially said, yes, there are more emails, um, but it was before they even had a warrant to look at them. Mm -hmm. They knew they existed, but they hadn't looked at them. They don't know if these are the same emails they've already looked at or anything new. And that seems a little bit problematic to have made that announcement, knowing that it's getting very mm -hmm. close to the election, without some sense of what is what is actually there. That's absolutely right. I mean, and the volume of these emails, there, there's no conceivable way we could get some answers before election right. day. Right. So it does seem like he's he's thrown a grenade into to the field here. And I just, I, 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 it runs contrary to FBI policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, past practice mm -hmm. has been very mum. Anybody in the press knows that. They don't comment on things. So for mm -hmm. th it's very unusual. The timing is suspect. I can see why this is raising red flags. Yeah, on both sides, it's so interesting. So you almost have to wonder what is next, right? right. What's in and, there? And certainly the FBI is very politically astute, right? They may say they're non-political, but of course they know exactly what they're doing politically. So this, I mean, it really does raise a question as to what was going on there. I mean, what, what were they thinking when they did this? So. Mm -hmm. Speaking of FBI and investigations, it's not like Donald Trump had a great week either, right? So this has been an interesting conversation about his charitable giving. And we have people looking into this with uh, investigators calling like 400 of the charitable organizations he says he's dealt with and given money to, and maybe he didn't, or maybe not as much as he said he did. Is this, Ben, is that still noise? Or is I, 
I, at this point, I think in the election cycle, yes. I think that uh, a lot of this is for hmm. voters in the minds of voters. They've, they know who they're leaning to toward, who they support, and, and really it all starts to sound the same, hmm. just like the emails. Well, I mean, historically, we've had an October surprise, something mm, coming yes. out that's just right. going to change the right. election. We have had surprise after surprise, surprise. I mean, now is it the November surprise? Is it the November 7th surprise? Oh, boy, yes. Uh, you know, honestly, I do think that people um, have been shocked so many times during this election cycle mm -hmm. that... They're numb to it. Meh, right. you know, right. whatever. And, and certainly for, for Trump voters, if they're already voting for him, this is not going to change right. their mind. Well, right, so. How many people do you think are out there that have not decided? <laughs> I mean, this seems to be coming up. Right. So even if there is another surprise, I mean, right. how many people out there still waiting to figure it out? Well, judging by the, at least here in Utah, judging by the early returns, there's still quite a bit out there because they're not submitting their ballots as quickly as they have. Is it? Do you think it's because they haven't decided? Oh, I think that they've decided. It's just, do I vote? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah. So are we talking at all for the president? Do you have a prediction on that? How many people are leaving that blank or how many people are doing write-ins? Yeah, I mean, again, I, th I think we will see some more write-in than we when we might typically see. Um, yeah. But, uh, but it, I, I, I do think what you're going to see is very likely a big surge of ballots this weekend, um, which you know, it's, I mean, the clerks are not happy with that because they'd really like to have all these things processed at this point. But the reality is, again, people are sort of, you know, waiting to see what happens. So, so, so. Let's, let, let's get to that point for just a second. I, I will tell you, as I'm around talking to people, I, I just want to ask this question that I get a lot. Because you look at the candidates in Utah, their unfavorables are off the charts above 70%. It's the lesser of the evils you're right. voting for. Right. Mm -hmm. so, if, so if that's the case, and I think that's what many people think is the case. I guess the big question is, how did we get here? How do we get to the point where we have two candidates that are so disliked, Utah, <laughs> the percentages are lower than the rest of the country. How did we get to this point? You, if, the sense I get from voters I talk to is that is the frustration. How did it get to this point? You had, on the Republican side, you had so many candidates who all of them had qualifications and all of them had support and then it just whittled around mm -hmm. to this on the democratic side you had you know the race initially with three then you had bernie sanders hillary clinton and mm -hmm. hillary clinton i mean both sides regardless whether you're republican democrat independent have that same sense of frustration it's i think that that's there's going to be a lot of post-election navel gazing mm -hmm. especially with the parties uh the republicans did a post-mortem in 2012 and you know, the, I think the next postmortem is going to be really interesting. And then the Democrats, I think that one thing you're going to see is there was a lot of Bernie Sanders uh, supporters who were delegates. And I think you're going to see a rewriting of the rules. The reckoning will be coming after the election in the Democratic Party. Well, look at that 2012 re-examining. I mean, uh, Republicans post-Romney said we need to, to reach out to women voters and we need to reach out to voters of color. Well, Donald Trump did neither <laughs> one. I mean, he threw that playbook out the window. And I, I honestly, I, I don't know how the parties are going to be able to, to revamp. I do mm -hmm. think that um, the consequence, because we have these really unfavorable candidates, people are looking at systems. Mm. Systematically, what has broken down? How, how did we get here? It, it has to do with the way that we operate systematically. Mm -hmm. And, and again, what you saw was two very different processes there. On the one hand, uh, for Democrats, what you got was the very predictable result, despite all the all the excitement that Bernie uh -huh. Sanders generated. Right, that that Clinton won because she was the establishment person. She she had all those connections. She she was sort of expected to do that, and she did. Sanders was a bit of a surprise, but again, the process kind of worked the way we would have expected. On the Republican side, it, again, it just. Trump as the Republican nominee just did not make any sense for the Republican Party. Well, so how did he? How did it happen then? <laughs> where, where do you go back and fix that if that's the case? Well, that's that's the thing. I mean, it, it's it's such an unusual event because, mm -hmm. you know, this at least as far as I can tell, this was not some big surge of people coming into the Republican Party who had not previously voted Republican. Mm -hmm. This was Republicans saying essentially, we're not happy with any of these choices that we see. And again, there were a lot of you know a lot of Republicans and you know people that we would. That we would expect to do well. Uh, they just they just didn't generate any excitement, and and Trump, you know, really surprised people in terms of how well he did. Don't underestimate charisma, the role of charisma, charisma. in politics. Um, you know, a lot of those other candidates just didn't have the spark. Yeah. So 
that maybe over, that compensates for a lot of other things. <laughs> Apparently. Well, well, that's so interesting. So let's let's talk about that because some of us are wondering. You, you talked about the naval gazing ban that's going to happen after uh, this election, and. One thing we were wondering about is when you have an, uh, something that's so nasty as this has been, really, and you know, start start to look more and more like a reality TV show than anything else, where you just forget that there are very real consequences. What is the impact on the millennials, the people who are growing up watching this, that we want to participate in the system in the future? Why don't we talk, start with you, Ben, and then, uh, Professor, you've talked a lot about this as well. So what, is, what does this do to that future generation of voters? I think there's a certain level of continued disenfranchisement, and I think that there's a certain amount of slacktivism that takes a par takes part. Uh, sure, I'll sign your change.org petition, or sure, I'll register on Facebook, you know, I s change my avatar on Facebook to this, but that's about the limit of it. I think that they, they just continue to opt out. The ones that are engaged, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen, were the ones who were Bernie Sanders backers, things like that, but they're not looking at the other impacts of it. In fact, it was interesting to see all these people seem to be taken by surprise when they saw that Bernie Sanders, if the Democrats take the Senate, could be one of the power players. You know, he doesn't have the White House, but he has the power in, in the Senate, but that uh -huh. it seemed to take a lot of people by surprise. The meme gets shared everywhere. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is why you should vote. Uh -huh. You know, and, and so interesting. But I do think that you will see, at least with millennials, yeah, that continued disenfranchisement with the party system. Have we lost them, or is there a way to get them back? I think that's up to the parties to decide. I mean, one of the things that I think is is very interesting here is again we what we had with particularly with Obama in 2008, right? There was that was when young voters were probably as most enthused about national politics mm -hmm. as, as we we had ever seen it in, in a very long time. Um, and in 2012, what the Obama campaign did, kind of uh, against expectations, was they continued to motivate uh, their coalition, right? So they 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 got young voters, they they uh, did well with uh, people of color, they they you know, and, and again attracted some enthusiasm, mm -hmm. even though. Uh, particularly the Romney campaign didn't think that was going to happen. Um, and so, but again, this time what we've got are, are lots of young voters who are looking at this thing, thinking, you know, neither Clinton or Trump is very appealing. And, you know, what I would hate to see happen is people sort of say, okay, I'm not interested in, in presidential sure. politics, that's right. Because again, if you, if you stop voting at a young age, the chances of then voting in the future are not great. Um, so it, it, there, is a, there is a real risk there. Um, I suspect, again, that voter, Voter turnout for young people is not going to be high, um, but it's not going to be uh, abysmal either. I think th I okay, think there's good. enough enough interest there that you know people will feel like yes, this is an important choice. I, I need to cast my vote. And, and young young voters are key. I mean, we look at the vote, um, the Brexit vote this mm -hmm. summer. I mean, young voters overwhelmingly did not want to leave the EU, and yet they didn't show up to vote. And mm -hmm. guess what happened? So I think a lot of people look at that and say, oh, we really need to get young voters out. How can we motivate them? Neither of these two candidates are doing it. Surprisingly, I think McMullen has uh, pretty high favorables among Utah's yeah, young younger. voters. That's true. I think his, his support is highest uh, under 40. So. That is absolutely right. But he also right. has high favorability among Mormons. True, right. true. So Which is this Trump a young thing, a Mormon thing? Right. That's, That's true. true. Very interesting. Okay, we're going to have to do one last thing, all right? This is the <laughs> last show before the election, and we've got the minds, the three of you. <laughs> Prediction time, all right? We'll keep track. You can take home one of these <laughs> glasses uh, if you are the closest. So let me ask you. Public television mug. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Presidential election. So I've heard kind of the theme already. Who wins by how much? Jennifer? Uh, are we talking nationally? Nationally, or nationally. Nationally, Clinton will win, but it will be very slim. Mm-hmm. Slim. Okay. Uh, again, I, I think I think Clinton wins. Uh, she wins the popular vote with just a little under 50 percent, uh, but does reasonably well with the Electoral College. She's going she's going to be well over 270. Well over 270. Well okay. over 270. To ben? use a, a well coined phrase, I report, you decide. Um, <laughs> the polls are showing Clinton ahead and Clinton likely to win, but she's not going to win Utah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to that second one. Right, we've got your first one. Who wins Utah? I think Trump barely, and that's based upon the polling. Who's number two? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> it, at this point, it's looking like Clinton. Okay, very good. Matt, uh, I, I think I think um, Trump wins with plurality. Uh, he's going to be kind of mid forties ish, I would guess. Um, Clinton is second. You think that high? Mid forties? I do. 
Okay. I think so. Wow. Yeah. Big number. That's bold. Yeah. I know. That's more bold prediction. Yeah. Than I That's thought. right. Yeah. He's a student of it all. So anyway, we have to listen to him. Go ahead. And you, Jennifer? Well, I may have to defer to our academic, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I would say Trump is going to take Utah, but I, I wouldn't put in the 40s. Okay. okay. Mm, very interesting. And just one final thing. So do the Republicans keep the House of Representatives? Yes. Oh, say. Yeah. 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 Matt says yes again. Easily. Yeah. Okay. Not so easy. How about the Senate? That is really up in the air. I think I, that that's uh, question mark. Uh, yeah. yeah. Question mark. They're, they're all right, right. That is a very safe answer uh, <laughs> for all of you. Probably not the bold predictions <laughs> you were hoping for, but uh, in this in this election season, who knows? In this yeah. election season, everything that you thought you knew about elections does not exist. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This one has rewritten the books all over the place. Yes. Yeah. All right. Very good. Wow. Very interesting conversation for sure. So insightful. We'll keep track because you all know what you're talking about. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> that's the case. Thank you so much uh, for, for your comments here. Uh, that's it for the Hinckley Report. For more political analysis and news of the week, please check out our Hinckley Report Web Extra online. The URL for that is www.kued.org slash Hinckley Report. We'll be back next week. Thank you and good night.